Matt, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, I got to call Useless Earl out. I was down there last night. I followed him home. He doesn't live in Forest Hills. I followed him all the way to the forest on the hill. That's where he's living right now. Are you living in a forest? I am not living in a forest. I live in an apartment in Forest Hills. Are you living in Forest Gump? How did the co-ed softball game go last night? Uh, the game was canceled. On account of what, girls? No, the other team forfeited. No, they didn't have enough tits on their team? No, they have enough players, period. So they forfeited. Well, you're not in a league, Earl. Let's face it. The shit that you talk about is not league play. Now, Bobby Pantera invited you into a men's softball league. Have you turned him down yet? No, I haven't responded to the offer yet. I'm, I'm thinking about Too it. Too many guys? No, not at all. And none of the people who work in radio at the station that you want to be at back at NEW? I haven't made up my mind one way or the other whether or not I was going to play in the have league. Have you made up your mind one way or the other whether you want to be with the Ron Fez show? Yes, I have. Oh, I can't wait for the decision. That's coming up a little later on in the show today, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I called him before the show, and I asked him uh, what we had ready to go today, and you could tell he had no idea of any show prep at all. Couldn't say the name Vonnegut to me. What was the Kurt Vonnegut story you were trying to spit out? No, it was a recent piece in Rolling Stone. I can't say the name Vonnegut. Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut. Yeah. And recent piece in Rolling Stone that's got to be three weeks old. Yeah, it's like several weeks old. And what's your point? No, I was, I was, I had a prep sheet in front of me, and I was just reading stuff off the prep sheets. What's your Vonnegut story? Um, Is this prep you did? No, I did not do it. Who came up with it? Um, honestly, I don't know. I wasn't sure if it was Fez or Dave. I'm not really sure. But it just said that, you know, the, um, the story was about the end times. He thinks we're in end times, and do we really think, you know, do you believe that statement at all? And that's something we're supposed to do on the air today. Potentially, yes. Do you think this is the end times? 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Guess what, Earl? After today's prep, I do. I feel like this is the end times for me. And you know what? I'm going to tell another Earl story. This fucking guy wanted to play when the Saints go marching in today, like some AM sports station in Tulsa, because the Saints won last night. No, it was, Earl, how hack is that? No, it was the song, uh, the Saints Here's, go marching. Here's uh, Matt. Matt, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, man. I, I ran into Earl the other night, and uh, he invited me over for dinner to watch a rerun of the Grammys, and he gave me the XM Studio uh, address for his place. Earl, what time's your MRI tomorrow? Four fifteen. I guarantee you, where they're supposed and they do this MRI to look at your fucking brain, they're going to see a baby rattle in your head because <laughs> I hear some <laughs> kind of fucking shaking going back and forth where you're supposed to be thinking from. That I'm, I have. This Dave has wrong. now become the shining member of this team. Look at him over there. Model I, him. I can't shadow him. Follow him wherever he goes. Like, he'll stay at a home at night, sleep there, shower, come back in the morning. I did all of that today. You went from the studio to our office. We're finding breadcrumbs all over back there. Mars thought we had rats. I didn't I didn't have the heart to tell him it's Earl that's in here chewing through the fucking <laughs> wires at night. <laughs> you actually told him to go home early last night, and as of 8.15... Earl Douglas still in the office. Yeah, of what went on until 9.30 even? Uh, the big Vonnegut fucking end time story. This just in, Rolling Stone three weeks ago does an interview. No, I was actually, With an 82-year-old man. I was actually trading emails with the left coast. And uh, Vonnegut, did you read the article at all? Yes. He did not say it was the end times in a religious fashion. He just said the human race has gotten so stupid that it's going to come to an end soon. You should write to Rolling Stone that says, I agree with uh, Vonnegut because I live in a studio. <laughs> I don't go home. Here's some pictures of me at my house studio. Mm. Uh, bam, you're on a fez. Uh, no, I do not think of Dan Tosh. All right, the show's cruising along. Thanks a lot, Earl. Interesting Big take. story, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, James, you're on Ron and Fez. Maybe Earl living in a van down by the river. You're trailing Frankenberry right now, Earl. That's where you are in the pecking order. 
Earl lives in a studio apartment. It happens to be a radio studio. And if I find out tomorrow that you've got another test after this MRI and this fucking stupid Febreze bit of yours is not going to pay off, it will be the end times. I don't love going to doctors at all. I, I hate going to doctors. I just want this test to end. I want it to be over. Your career? No, not my career. I want oh, these medical tests. I was tests. saying I can make that happen. I want the medical test to end. Uh, Scott, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, buddy. It's 287-253. Thank you, sir. I was wondering, when you guys have guests, do they have to bring housewarming gifts for Earl? Yeah, they bring him the new Dylan. Here, here's something we thought you could use for your home. Oh, you're a crazy bastard. I'm going to get him a set of headphones for his house. I have a home, and it's in Forest Hills. I don't think so, Earl. 9.30, he's in here. 9.30 at night. How did you know all this, Dave? I happen to be here uh, working, but also working and doing real work, not watching the Yanks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lucky Boy. Hey, uh, you're you're welcome. Too bad we put Lucky Boy on there and not Golden Boy. <laughs> what happened to your arm? You're all black and blue there. What happened? Drunk and fell down? Yeah, almost everything is drunk and fell down in the shower related. You know what? I look at you. You got a heroin addict's arms. Every heroin addict I've ever known is all bruised up like that. I'm a very easily bruised person. I'm worse than like a banana, really. Well, definitely take care of yourself and okay. be safe. I will. <laughs> Let me see if you're bruising. Put your arm up. There it is. Look at that come up. Yeah. That transparent skin, it just can't take much. No, I love the color it gives them, though. <laughs> That's not bad at all. The black or the blue? I love them both. Uh, Kurt, you're on Run of Fez. Buddies, what's going on? Yeah. We can always tell when you back Earl into a corner because he starts every sentence with no. And, uh, Ron, that noise you're hearing isn't a baby rattle. It's a hamster on a wheel. I'm out. That's it. There's something rattling in your head, Earl. Tell them that for the MRI tomorrow. Uh, Rush, you're on a fence. Hey, boys. The preacher man says it's the end of time, and the Mississippi River, she's going dry. Grab the song, Earl. Oh, Mr. I Know Every Tune Ever. No, I didn't say that. I just got stumped, that's all. Yeah, you did. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's the answer's a black girl. Hey, uh, Scott, you're on Fez. Hey, how's it going, Ron Fez? Uh, yeah. just wanted to say, is Earl saying uh, it's the end times or the end times? Is it number nine? I don't know where he's going with this. Earl thinks the world is coming to an end. And Earl, why would you be telling me somebody else's idea on my way in? What is happening there? No, I was just giving you a rundown what was there. A rundown. Fucking rundown is what the show is right now. It's fucking rundown. It's an abandoned show. This show is like a fucking haunted house in a neighborhood in New Orleans that nobody wants to go into. God, that's creepy. All there is is our old car upside down in mud out front. Oh, yeah, they say Ron and Fizzy spirits still inside there late at night. You can hear a baby rattle going... Back and forth. Nick, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Nick. Hey, what's going on, Ron? Hey, buddy. Hey, I was wondering if uh, Fezzy's going to start sending centerpieces to the studio before he gets there for, uh, uh, er, fuck. That's one time that we caught Fez at a, one, another one of your lies. And you what have you so mean, many another one? that you say before a party, you will send a centerpiece to the hostess. If it's a nice special occasion, yes, I'll get, I'll go on. You have ate at my fucking house 900 <laughs> times. We never saw a centerpiece. <laughs> but I told that to my chick, right? She goes like this. That was on Martha Stewart yesterday. This fucking rat. He watches Martha Stewart, the only funny person to steal lines from Martha Stewart in history. What? A centerpiece. No guy would, no person with balls would send someone a centerpiece. People would love to get one. For what? Say if they're having a nice dinner party and they got something beautiful in the center of the table with flowers and a candle combination. They you don't get that from a guy, you get that from your aunt. 
They just block the view. Anyway, I never understood centerpieces. They're they the worst. They stink. Yeah. They smell. Is the problem. Yeah. There's all kinds of aroma coming out of there. I can't smell the turkey. <laughs> I want my food to smell like food. Not like some fucking pine cones some homo mailed over. I think it's a thoughtful idea, and maybe that'll be my new thing starting next year or something. Why next year? Well, this year's halfway over. Start it tonight. In 12 months, I'm going to start making some changes. <laughs> Would you at least admit that you got that from Martha Stewart? I will not admit that I got that from Martha Stewart. It was my own bad idea. I don't know whether it's a bad idea, but I know it's a fucking... There's nothing that a guy I've ever done. And I'm trying to think. There was a woman in a studio, and she even laughed at you for saying that. Winnie Cooper was here. No, I, I meant a woman. Oh. Not a some fucking... I didn't say a lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Winnie Cooper, who we never talk to anymore. Although I did hear from Frenchie yesterday. Uh, maybe Bronx Johnny's back in the running. I don't yes. know. Very yeah. nice for Bronx Johnny. I'm very bad for the next person. This fucking Frenchie runs roughshod over all of our friends. You know, I shouldn't say nice for Bronx Johnny because it's going to end up in heartache again for him. She's like the siren, Fezzy. Bring in the Greek <laughs> ships into the rocks. Please stay away from this girl. She breaks heart after heart. And it doesn't matter how bad Bronx Johnny got his heart broken before, he's not going to be able to resist going back. Uh, Dave, you're on Fez. Hey, keep him with the serial nicknames. I think Earl's new nickname should be Count Chocula. You want to go with that gimmick, girl? You're Count Chocula? Um, I don't really like the name particularly, but... We'll call you Chaco. See if it catches on. <laughs> Chaco! Here comes Chaco. Dave, you'll be Booberry. Oh, well, awesome. Fez, your centerpiece. And off we go. <laughs> That's not even a cereal. Oh, it isn't? No. I don't know what's happening out there in the world. I, I keep waiting for the centerpiece to be sent to my house. Now, you're coming over on Sunday, right? Yes. I want a 600-hour fucking centerpiece to arrive by Saturday night. A $600 centerpiece? You know what? This will be easy. Give me 500 I'll pick it up myself. We don't even have to worry about the fucking shipping. That would be like a solid gold centerpiece. Why, how much would you normally spend? I would say a centerpiece is probably $35, 40 mm. And you think it's a big deal to send that to someone? Yes, I think it's a nice gesture. You can't get a nice flower pot for $30. I, I gotta agree. Think. I don't think you've ever sent flowers to anybody. And real good flowers. Fucking Mother's Day cost me a C&O to fucking holler every time they come out. And how can that be? I would think a centerpiece would be more than flowers. No, I would think the flowers are more. The bouquet of flowers are more. You're making them yourself like, uh, what's that? Like you're in fucking third grade when you come home on one of those things. Like for some reason when you spray paint macaroni and fucking glue it to something <laughs> to tell your mom it's a Christmas tree. Hey, I made this for you. It's beautiful. This will be our centerpiece. <laughs> One time when I was a kid, I got my mom a plant for Christmas. I thought it would be nice. I went and wrapped the damn thing two weeks beforehand. She opened up a pot of dirt on Christmas Day. For some reason, as a little kid, I thought the plant would have lived. You wonder why your mom used to smack you. My opinion, she didn't hit you enough. And the plant was so wilted and gone, I accused my brother of stealing the plant out of the pot. And in fact, it was just a dried up weed at that point. Why don't you call me these uh, with these stories late at night when I have insomnia? <laughs> <laughs> I would fucking love to hear them. One time when I was a kid, a gift went bad. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of luck with that. Well, tell me more. Tell me about what it was like in the old days in Dullesville. Tell me all about it. That's about it for those Look, stories. Uh, Dave no. don't want to laugh because it's fucking fancy and you'll get in trouble later. No, I'm not. Yeah. Then what's wrong laughing. with you? <laughs> you holding back a sneeze? No. <laughs> hey, uh, Carl, you're on the first. Yeah, I, I think what Earl's trying to tell you is that he wants to quit, but he doesn't have the nerve. So I'm thinking that you might want to uh, do a mercy killing and just put a bullet in him and let him go. And uh, the uh, end of the world song would be a good song to play, I think. Thanks. There's your crowd calling in the backyard, Pearl. Are you saying you want to quit, but you don't have the balls? No, I don't want to quit. You want me to fucking pull the trigger? I don't want you to do that. White people are so scared of black people. That's right, I said it. I don't want to get fired, and I don't want to quit. What, what do you want to do, get paid for nothing? There's no in-between. 
I'm not, I want to work through this. I Do not throw me out of my home. <laughs> I you know when like, like some of these fucking corporations will say to you, you have a home here? Fucking Earl takes that to fucking heart. Like, it's true. Oh, it's a one. I'm living in Midtown. I'm living on 57th Street. No kidding. You know what an apartment here would probably cost for the size of that uh, office we have? And when you really look at it, this whole place, this would cost you about $9,500, Earl. Yeah, it is pricey uh, real estate here in Midtown. You live in large. You should start getting a bill from XM. I pay $800 a month in Forest Hills. Uh, Gary, you're around a Fez. Ronnie, how you doing, buddy? Good. Hey, with your partner there, uh, Chaco and uh, Boo Berry, uh, I guess Fez could be Fruit Loops. Uh, this whole little fucking gimmick is going out of control for me. Uh, James, you're around a Fez. Hey, uh, Fez's name needs to be Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. This is starting to get like the Hudson Hawk, remember? <laughs> when they all had like little candy bar names? 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Brian, you're on Runner Fez. Hey, uh, Earl is trying to stick around long enough so he can get in under the uh, rent stabilization guidelines. You know that, don't you? Earl's parents right now, they've got a four-bedroom place in Queens. They're paying $8 a month. And they're still fucking late. Here's 16. Tell them to enjoy the rest of the autumn. You know, Earl says he was on the computer last night. Again, the question ha that's begged is, why doesn't he go home to be on the computer? He don't you have a computer I mean? at home. He probably doesn't. This is well, his home. I have a laptop at home, but the emails were coming very quickly. I can produce the emails. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? Again? What are you talking about, Earl? I can we, we, No, we have, we have Sam Moore booked for tomorrow, right? Oh, jeez. We have Sam Moore booked for tomorrow. <laughs> Uncle Sam. No, <laughs> We have Sam Moore, formerly of Sam and Dave, booked for tomorrow. All right, let me check a calendar. What year is this? If it's 68, I'm going crazy and I'm calling Variety. Holy shit, it's 2006. So we were just trading off emails back and Who, forth. Who, you and Sam Moore? No, uh, uh, Rhino Records. I'm sure Sam Moore doesn't have a computer. But just go home and do that. Go home and, and trade emails. At least you get the comfort of your own surroundings. That don't exist. Well, you are, you are really the new Dave. You are finding yourself. No. You know what you got, Dave? I noticed? Yeah. Well, upper hand. You've no. got an upper hand that I never saw you with before. No, no. I, I, I'm speaking out of care for... for you laugh in Fezzi's face for telling a dull story, no. and then you laugh because he made up a lie so, saying that he sells out uh, centerpieces. Now you're laughing at your executive producer. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is these are those are laughs of maybe nervousness, but I care for. Everybody. What's next? You're going to start uh, taunting uh, Elo, letting the uh, air out of the tires. You Paneros, Jaguar. What's next in your world, Dave? No, I respect those guys big time, Eric, and all he's done for our company. You Absolutely. think he could pick you out of a lineup? Absolutely I bet, not. <laughs> I bet he couldn't pick you out of a lineup of two people. No, I know because I I. Met him a bunch of times, shook in his hand. Shooken? Shook in his hand and said, uh, hi, Mr. Logan, how are you? And he just does the, hey, Buster, or something like that. He calls yeah, that's him, Buster, because he's from the 1930s. <laughs> he said it was. Good, good to see you, Buster. By the way, I'm heading down to Times Square. There's a traveling crap game I want to be part of. He said it one time. Buster? He did. He called me Buster one time. You know why? You look just like Buster Brown. <laughs> That's the fucking thing there. And what was Buster Brown's dog's name? Uh, Ty. How old are you? You can remember all this. I used to get Buster Brown shoes. <laughs> Back in the 30s when it was cool. No, much later in time than that. That's when you were a newspaper boy. <laughs> Papers, everybody! Lindbergh has landed! Lindbergh has landed! It's me, Fez Watley! Papers! I'm much younger, thank you. You know, when I was a kid down at Crystal Beach, this lady used to drive around uh, at night through all the cottages... And she would have newspapers in the back of the car and comic books. And she would stop cottage by cottage and, and um, sell them. Oh, man, that would have been best to see the comic book lady coming. That was fucking unbelievable. Wow. You'd be out there with change going, I can't wait. <laughs> papers, papers. You would hear her getting closer like a fucking ice cream truck. And then she would have comic books and you could look through her back seat and like grab a couple before she yelled at you to hurry up. It was so exciting. I, I used to get excited when the Jewel T man would come by. He would he would come by, b 
big tray of stuff with him. He I don't even out. know what this is. Yeah, this is a guy. He would come to your door. You used to get excited when the Iron Horse would come by. <laughs> That's a train. <laughs> you, you and the other members of your family would be sitting up on a plateau. Look at that. Seemed like Iron Horse. <laughs> Jewel T. Yeah, Jewel T was the company, and it was like a door-to-door -door salesman. How old are you? I don't know anything. Whoa, is that where your mom would buy brushes? <laughs> Basically, because he would come in, he would have this big display of stuff, and it would be everything from, like, cake mixes to <laughs> socks. <laughs> Cake mixes. Yeah, to toy. He would have toys with Only them. in the South. Well, they bring you cake mixes door to door. Cannot be a day younger than a hundred. I am. Jeez. More than a day. I mean. So yeah, this guy. It was. He was like, and he would stop at the house, and you would buy stuff from Jewel T. Like you buy your mom a nice plant that you wrapped up tight. <laughs> now that I bought at a school sale. Here he comes. He's on some fucking horse and wagon. <laughs> Fez's family just living in one fucking log cabin down there in Pinellas Park. He was in the Jewel T van. And, man, that would be exciting because you never knew exactly what he was going to have with him. So, wait, this was just a guy in the van with random <laughs> items that he was driving around? Why, didn't he have a supermarket in your neighborhood? <laughs> we did, but this guy came right to your house with stuff. So he was a portable five and dime. Yeah. Then he's like this. Son, you ever see this before? He just pulls his dick out and starts waving at <laughs> Fezzy. Mom, can we get this? <laughs> it fits me perfect, like a hat. Earl, do you remember when the Ku Klux Klan used to come by door to door when you were younger? No, I just remembered. Um, it Your was... mom's gonna like this. There's some strange fruit hanging out there, Earl. <laughs> Don't let you be part of it. For us, it was always uh, either Jehovah's Witnesses or the Muslims hitting up. Yeah, well, what's that selling you don't want to buy? <laughs> Eternal life. Who needs that? Yeah, the Muslims were great because it was always by the uh, was it the final call in a bean pie for what, <laughs> so, like, mm. whatever reason. Like, what, look, what? young Fezzi, here come Iron Horse, bringing more white men. I did not live on the prairie. Bringing <laughs> more white men along. Fezzi's Indian name was um, <laughs> him with dick and ass. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> that is really him, rude. Him with dick and ass. Please look. Iron Horse comes. I would have a much better nickname than that. What would your Indian nickname be? Mine would probably, uh, you know... Hempson uh, Centerpiece? No, nah, it would probably, just because I'm such a hairy guy, I'm sure it would have involved buffalo in it, so I'd probably be like Nervous Buffalo. Would probably be my Indian name. What would be yours? For me, it would probably be Sins Without Remorse. I don't even know if they had that. <laughs> I just don't have a huge amount of remorse. Uh, Dave, Firewater? <laughs> firewater? No. no, I know. Smells like chef cock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> smells like chef cock. Where's your squall? Maybe one of my activities. Maybe I, I could be called Spanx with Luberderm. <laughs> I think that's sick fuck accurate. Earl, Indian name for you. What would it be? Off the top of my head, I would say Black Like Night. Really? I was going to go with Sambo. <laughs> White people are so scared of black people. <laughs> Here comes Sambo. <laughs> Earl says, lives among microphones. Now, did every Indian do that or, you know, like, did every tribe have to? Because it makes a lot more sense than the way we name people. Like you being Nervous Buffalo, there should be some kind of nervous name to you, you know? Yeah, totally, because that's who I am. I'm just a nervous person. And Or you could be lies a lot. I would not be lies a lot. Centerpieces, girlfriends, <laughs> and now the Jewel T Man. Nobody believes a damn thing you say. The Jewel T Man did exist. He did. Yeah. Yeah, I think all the Indians did that. They just they saw things and they named it. Matt, you're running Fez. Mahabone, boys. Yeah. Fez's uh, Indian name should be Walters with. My waltzes with dudes. I don't want to get into Indian names. It's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> what are you writing them down because you're all happy over there? You fucking weirdo. He's putting together a tribe. I was thinking maybe Earl could also be called Naps in Studio because I saw him doing that yesterday. Jesus Christ, do you love the fucking... You lying sack of shit. I did not nap in the studio. Sh sack of shit that lies. Earl, I want you to understand something. 
This fucking kid is running a gossip comb to me every single day. <laughs> you can't make a move without me hearing about Look, it. Why do you think I never tell him anything? And just like page six, it isn't always true. I know it isn't true, and yet I still enjoy reading. <laughs> <laughs> Look what Earl's up to now. Hey, remember when uh, Blowhard uh, called this the other day and said the Orangeman was a nickname because they said the American Indians looked orange and in Syracuse took that? Right. Some guy who went to the school uh, wrote to me, that's a bunch of bullshit. Once again, he attacked Blowhard. I'm not even going to go into it. But Orangeman is something that the Irish Catholics used to call our Irish Protestants, which when you think about it now, it does make a lot more sense because, you know, the I I Irish Protestants always would wear orange and right. St. Patrick's Day and shit. That's an interesting thought. Yeah, I never, I never thought heard that, that before. I'm not so, too down uh, with the Protestants, so now I'm fucking banning Syracuse. That's it. I used to root for them. I'll you're done with them? Done. Are you, you hate Irish Protestants? Absolutely. They're the fucking... They're, they're, they're my uh, Boston Red Sox. Did your uh, family ever send money to the IRA? I can neither confirm or deny that wow. comment. You know, you know, for all the people that uh, hate terrorism in this country now, there was a lot of families that used to send fucking money to the IRA years ago. That's a true story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a fucking true Especially story. Especially if my Uncle Buddy were, is listening. There used to be IRA t-shirts in my fucking neighborhood, <laughs> IRA all the way. And fucking remember Bobby Sands, who was really the first, uh, uh, he was basically the first Nicole Richie. He just wouldn't eat for us. Oh, man. He went on a hunger. You never heard of Bobby Sands? I've heard the name, but I wasn't sure the story along with him. Well, he used to send centerpieces out, and those centerpieces would explode. Well, no, they had him. The English had him. And he fucking went on a hunger strike until he died. Could you imagine staying hungry and starving yourself till you died? No, that's insane. I would never... Hunger strike... I don't even think I would be, have an opportunity to. I would just start and fucking bite shit. <laughs> yeah, hunger strike is the one, is one way I definitely know I will not die. It just won't happen. I couldn't stay out of the fridge long enough, no matter what the cause was. You know how I think you're going to die? How? Heart attack. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't think you will. Most, I honestly don't. Because you already took care of yours. Yeah. I always thought I would die, like, accidentally, like, not paying attention and get hit by a bus or take the wrong dosage of pills or something like that. Well, that's how I used to try to die. <laughs> Wouldn't work. Yeah. Now I'm just pretty sure the heart's going to just stop. If I had to really guess for you, uh -huh. I see you being choked by a partner. Now, you're my partner. I'm at life partner. Oh. You know how you guys are always choking each other. Well, I just don't want to be murdered. That would just stink. Why? Because it just seems like such a horrible way to go, uh, to leave the planet. I always wanted to die of the fucking hail of cops bullets. Just to, for your last words, be, come on, you motherfuckers! Because you know you're going to be making the news, and you know all the fucking neighborhood kids always talk about you. That's why he went over there. Hail of cops bullets. His last words was, come on, all you motherfuckers. Just to have them light you up. Jesus Just Christ. to go out like Sonny at the that's, fucking toll booth. That's kind of suicide by cop is what you're saying. Yeah, there it? is such a thing as that, suicide by cop. It is talked about a little bit where guys will fucking do something where a cop has to shoot them. Right. But it is a better way to go out, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And th this way you don't have to have the big stigma of being in hell forever. Because if you shoot yourself in the head, you are, you're going to be in hell forever due to you killed your so own self. You honestly think heaven is filled with guys that cops killed? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the cops killed him. Let him right in. No, but that is that is a technicality that God said right, we could get away with. All right, let me say this. You think God is too stupid to figure out that you went out of your way to get killed? He's not. He's, As instead of jumping off a bridge, you started doing crazy dances up on top of the bridge. Until you finally slip. Then the Lord goes like this: Ah, you slip. Let him in. That's the loophole. Absolutely, I believe that. So you think you're fooling God? Yes. In a, in a, no, in a way, you want. You don't think judge. God sees you over there with a the Luberdern laying in that fucking basement apartment with Queen? That's not an immortal thing. God knows what up your ass. <laughs> There's nothing up my ass. Hey, I you, it's very venial that that taking off. No, I remember it's a problem. I oh. think it came well because it depends on what your thoughts are. Yeah, and I don't because you have impure thoughts. 
or a sin? I don't really think at all. I just watch porn, and there's nothing really in my brain going on. Most of those women are forced to fuck at gunpoint. You don't see that as a sin, that you're in the porn business? <laughs> yeah, it's a sin. It's a venial sin. It's not a cardinal. I'm cool with venial sins. What the hell? Big deal. You've never done a major sin in your life? No, I don't think. I've stolen, maybe, but... Then maybe you stole. <laughs> well, that's, that's not a cardinal. Either you did or not. If I steal the Ten Commandments, that's a cardinal sin. If I steal a Don Mangley rookie card, I doubt that I'm going to hell for that. And that's, that's just a hypothetical, in case anyone checks my <laughs> card collection. You never stole anything bigger than that? No. You've never been part of a fucking holdup in your life? <laughs> no. All right, fine. <laughs> Hold up. You never even drove the getaway car. No, absolutely not. I wouldn't uh, take part in any type of robbery, especially ones that include weapons. Well, what if the fucking gun isn't loaded? It's just scare the old lady. I have so thought she has that. a heart attack. I actually have thought of that a lot. I thought if I was going to commit a big crime, it would be the you know bulletless gun uh, robbing a bank. I don't see you know what the big deal is with that. So your fantasy crime would be bank rob. Yeah, with with no weapon. Or what's your fantasy crime? Um, something like white collar crime where there's no real victims, but you You've still You've never had a white collar in your life. <laughs> a, a white so collar. So you see yourself as an embezzler. Or, or a guy who <laughs> takes stuff from the studio <laughs> home. He's the black Michael Milken. <laughs> and those guys, and those Chocolate fuckers got to keep their money. Chocolate Milken. We could barely get that fucking line out. I was so excited. <laughs> it was so easy. I had the yellow of my heart on. <laughs> Chocolate Milken. What about for you, Fez? Um, it would be some sort of museum robbery, whether it's like a famous jewel or a piece of art, something like that. You see yourself as the Pink Panther. Mm. Yeah, exactly. All right, nice move. Uh, and, you know, the uh, that's what basically that uh, news uh, show is about. I forget the name. Oh, Smith. He's an uh, art thief. Oh, the Ray Liotta At least show. the first week he was. So, with that, um, I would not want to pawn the thing, though, is my problem. 866 Ron Zero Fez. 866 Ron Zero Fez.